see all of you. It's been so long, but you know what? We're gonna all get together on December 5th for the Star of Bethlehem event, December 5th, seven o'clock via Zoom, but we're all gonna be unmuted so we can sing together just like old times. So watch for your email, check your Facebook page and the website for all the details, and I will see you then live via Zoom. Bye everybody. your ninja santa telling you about the christmas angels sign up this year i know i'm not at church and neither are you but i will see you at church on december 6th and december 13th those are the days you're going to bring your christmas angels back to the church this year the mission committee has decided we're going to do the christmas angel program but because of covid we have to do it on the internet. So, all you need to do after this watching Pastor Dave on his sermon is go to the church website. Where are my instructions? Oh, here they are. Yeah, the website is nsumc.com. When you're there, go up to the toolbar, says latest happenings. You can scroll down and you'll see Christmas Angel Sign Up. Click on there and up in the right corner, there's instructions, including Samurai Santa's telephone number if you need any help. There's a list of 160 children. So there's plenty to choose from, although we've given up about half of them so far. So you better get started. Once you've selected your children, you have to scroll down, all the way down through the advertising and go to submit and sign up. In there, you have to enter your name, your telephone number, and your email address. You put your email address in because at the end, after you're all done, you're going to get an email back with the ch children's name and all the gift ideas so you don't forget. So you've got to scroll down again, and then uh, you hit sign up now. There's a comment section in there, but you don't need to worry about that. Don't fill it in. So I'll see you at church with your gifts on December 6th or December 13th. All right, got to go back this again. Good morning, and welcome to North Scottsdale United Methodist Church. Uh, maybe I should just go one step further and say, Happy New Year. Yes, in the life of the Christian church today, the first Sunday of Advent marks the beginning of the new Christian year. And boy, we've been looking for some newness in this year that we've been a part of. And so that's my prayer for you, that as we come to the season of Advent, we're exploring the theme, Companies Coming. It's the company of the birth of Christ again in our lives, in our church, in our community, and before the world. And in that, we experience the grace and the love of Jesus Christ, the incarnate word that comes and takes residence in our lives. 
Again, I want to welcome you here if you're with us for the first time or multiple times. We are glad that you've made this a part of your church experience today in the sanctuary of where we gather. <sighs> Life is full of surprises. Life is full of, un is of unexpectations. Life is full of those times in which we experience a proclamation and that we prepare for may we continue to slowly walk in the pace of this season, the season of Advent, the expectation of a coming before us. Will you pray with me? God, we come to this time of worship today, and we so much would love to have some company in our lives. And so this season reminds us that with the, the season of Advent, we are to experience a coming of the Christ child. May we see Jesus before us in many different ways this season as we truly experience the birth of Christ in and before us that we too might be the birth of Christ for others. In all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, and we're glad you're with us today.
Come, Lord Jesus, come, based on Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 9. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Rip open the sky. Make planes divert their flight paths. Tell the mountains to duck and rush into the sanctuary. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come and silence the violence. Stop stray bullets that kill the innocent. Expose dealers who peddle addiction. Make your enemies know you and tremble in your presence. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We may fail to notice your presence in everyday living, in casual conversations, or in blessings disguised as coincidences. Still we cry. Come, Lord Jesus, come. If ever there was a year we needed Advent, this is that year. We hardly know how to describe the year we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be. Nothing. We need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that the nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, O oh Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us, even in the mess of our world. Hope that you will still see us, though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
after Thanksgiving and after that first candle was lit on the Advent wreath. It's almost a time for the countdown, a time for some wonderful, wonderful events to be happening. And so I remember back, I remember back to my childhood. Remember how between Thanksgiving and Christmas, that time of Advent, I waited. I waited for great things that I knew would happen. I knew that the birth of Christ was going to happen and I would be able to go to our Christmas Eve service, my favorite season, service of all, where we would light candles. I thought about and anticipated and waited for expectantly those gifts that I would be given from my parents and from Santa. And I waited. And then on Christmas morning, great things happened like I had hoped for. My parents, although we had not much money during the rest of the year, made Christmas a superb event. They would have tables of chocolates and nuts and fruits all laid out, things that we would never thought of having or asking for the rest of the year. It was an amazing, amazing time. And so I think about this year especially, Christmas for kids who don't have parents who are going to provide that superb Christmas for them. This has been a very difficult year. And I think of the foster kids that we have helped from our church in the past. You remember the angel tree outside of the church where you could go out and pick up a paper with a child's name and age and what they wanted for Christmas, and how good it would make you feel to help that child have a superb Christmas. Well, even though we don't see those angel trees outside of the church, we can still provide those angel gifts for kids. What we need to do is to go online and look at the weekly update. And there you'll find about the angel tree and you just have to press on how to get in and how to sign up. And there are many, many children and adults waiting for those gifts. So I hope that you and your family will, will do that to help provide a superb Christmas for someone who is waiting and waiting expectantly for really, really good things to happen. Let us pray. Holy Lord God, as we wait expectantly for the Christ event, we pray that you will use us, use us to help others to have a superb event because Christ will be born anew in us and in them. Hear us as we pray together the Lord's Prayer saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The second scripture reading today is from Mark 13, verses 24 through 37. In those days after the suffering of that time, the sun will become dark and the moon won't give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then they will see the human one coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. Then he will send the angels and gather together his chosen people from the four corners of the earth, from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Learn this parable from a fig tree. After its branch becomes tender and it sprouts new leaves, you know that summer is here. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he's near at the door. I assure you that this generation won't pass away 
until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. But nobody knows when that day or hour will come. Not the angels in heaven and not the Son. Only the Father knows. Watch out. Stay alert. You don't know when that time is coming. It is as if someone took a trip, left the household behind, and put the servants in charge, giving each one a job to do, and told the doorkeeper to stay alert. Therefore, stay alert. You don't know when the head of the household will come, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows in the early morning or at daybreak. Don't let him show up when you weren't expecting and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, stay alert. The coming of Jesus is the greatest intrusion in human history and the greatest intrusion in your life. Jesus makes all things new. And the season of Advent is about expectation. The season of Advent is about our preparation. And the season of Advent is about arrangement. Furthermore, the season of Advent is about proclamation. So to begin... Advent is about getting ready for a birth. And in this case, the birth is about Jesus. But we've done this for so long, every year to be exact. But what can we gain differently this year as we prepare for Christmas and the birth of the Christ child in our lives? About four years ago, Rebecca and I were like any other expecting parents. Crazy. It was as if we had lost our minds, but to us, life seemed pretty even keel. 
while attending our weekly Bradley classes, we were also preparing a nursery where we would bring our daughter to live and to be a part of our family. There was painting that took place all over the walls. We were creating a theme of, of giraffes, and Rebecca was making bedding, all of these things as we were expecting a new joy to come into our home. Which brings us to an understanding that Advent is also about preparation. We, as we were looking forward to the expectation of Alec's birth, we were also in the midst of preparing and rearranging our detailed lives. Rebecca had submitted for a three-month leave from work, and I split up my time of a, of a three-week paternity leave by being at home for the first month with Rebecca and Alex, returned back to the church for two months, and then took off the next two months after that to allow for Rebecca to return to work as I cared for Alex at home. I thought this time would be a walk in the park, a break. There'd be books I could read. I could do some sermon preparation. There could be church programs to implement Oh, was I far from right. I was wrong. The preparation of this time away was far from getting some extra work done because the time of working was about caring for a newborn child. Aside from the multiple feedings and changings, when Alex took a, mo Alex took a moment to sleep, that was a moment for me to sleep too. In short, all the plans I had in mind were swept aside to a, account for the time to attend to the need of the new company that was now dominating about every minute of our lives. All the preparation of the coming of this new little company under our roof was cast aside as we became absorbed in the time of the life of all that was about our daughter. As we look at Advent, Advent's also about a time of arrangement. And in a similar means, our experience connects with daily life. But in this case, it's not about newborn babies. What seems to absorb our lives in most cases today is we are consumed so much by things like the news cycle. These become the thing that we tend to, that take up our day-to-day -day life. What's happening in the news around the world? Years ago, this arrangement of time into the news cycle was given the title, The CNN Complex. It was a syndrome that was first identified and named during, incidentally, the Gulf War, when people from all around the world were glued to their TV screens, watching the same battle scenes and ballistic attacks over and over. For those who've been newborn parents, it was like every moment and breath that we watch of our children when they're first born. It's about an arrangement that can be quite different than our typical routines. Call it an addiction, especially for the, the CNN complex, as they say. It's an addiction to news and bulletins and, most generally, the, the postmodern addiction to information. Whether we understand or comprehend the information or not is immaterial. We've become addicted in such a way to, to simplify and to just take in this information itself. We, we ingest this information without really digesting it. And we do it all the time. If you doubt this, try this experiment. This experiment. Take this test. Next time you see someone glancing at their watch, go up to them and ask them what time it is. How many can you tell without looking back at your watch that they could tell you what time it is? You see, almost everyone will, you ask will need to consult their watch all over again to give you the information you need. We've come to crave information for information's sake, and we take in information constantly without comprehending or conceptualizing it. Which leads us to our fourth mark today about Advent. It's about proclamation. Therefore, we come to a season of Advent and to another understanding of the season itself. Advent is about a proclamation. And the challenge of Advent is to break us out of some sort of news complex and to bring us into a world where information becomes knowledge, becomes wisdom. Advent breaches our psychological and intellectual and spiritual systems that build up immunities against wonder, mystery, magic, and surprise. 
Advent injects into us lives with faith, a faith that reminds us of the company that is coming and is before us. Of course, we have this love-hate relationship with surprise. Nobody likes to be surprised. And on the one hand, we are so uh, caught up in our every, same, every minute schedules that we have, whether it be our 8 to 5 jobs or our 5 to 11 demands of families. It leaves little time for spontaneity or adventure or surprise. So we try to compensate. We juggle the events of the nature of things to to compensate for our own personal interest. But consider how much time is devoted to things like the weather report when it comes to our local newscast. Again, another thing we we might become mesmerized is the weather. And we take delight when when the, the weather person fails to accurately forecast the weather. Even with all the tracking systems of forecasting, the weather is still a hit or miss venture as is our prediction of what is coming to us. It's all about surprise, whether if we're prepared or not prepared. Yet, it's to become a proclamation to us. The gospel text this week reminds us that as we are now entering Advent, the season of surprise, we had better be on our toes. Our God is a surprising God who has acted in surprising, unpredictable ways since the creation of Adam. Advent is a time to to prepare for the miraculous birth of Christ into the world. But from year to year, we can never really predict just when that event will occur for us in our own lives. Christ does not enter the world at the stroke of midnight on December 5th. Christ may have entered our life sometime even around that and before and after. We have this saying, I hope I'm not intruding. How many times have we heard that? And we usually don't like to take people by surprise or to interrupt their settled plans and, and the processes of, about those. But there are moments in life when a, a Christian is called to intrude and to keep intruding. But why? Because we serve an intrusive God. Indeed, Jesus the Christ was the biggest intruder in all history. His birth, the word made flesh, was the greatest intrusion of eternal into the temporal, the divine into the human, the spiritual into the material. The entire Bible, Old and New Testaments, testifies to the power of an intrusive God breaking into our lives with the news of God's amazing grace and love. Jesus' final example in today's gospel lesson notes that When the master left on his journey, he assigned his servants specific tasks to carry out while he was gone. As Christians, as disciples of Christ, we too have been given a very definite assignment. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the news of the Holy Spirit's surprising presence in our midst, is only good news if it is told and retold until all have heard and all have felt Christ's love. So how are we preparing for Christ's return? Are we willing to intrude into the mystery and the ordinaries of others' lives in order to reveal the surprising gifts God has in store for them? Are we willing to, to have that occur in our lives? I have this uh, self-winding watch, and you have to keep it moving in order to keep it ticking. Otherwise, it stops. It's a reminder for us that we're called to keep moving as we prepare for the company of Christ, that Christ child that calls us to keep moving. And so we move in expectation. We move in preparation. We move in arrangement. We move in proclamation. We move as we prepare for the company of the birth of Christ in our lives. Let us prepare as company is coming before us into our lives, into the community of faith, and before our world. Thanks be to God. Amen.
as we dedicate our gifts today, we wait on the tiptoes of anticipation, waiting for our Christ to come to us. Let us pray. Great God of wonderful surprises, we enter the season of preparation for your son's coming, looking not for just a memory of past events, but anticipating a return. We strive to get our lives in order and pray that our giving of ourselves to these preparations might reflect the earth-shaking importance of his coming. Help us to give ourselves generously, for we do not know the day or the hour. We pray in the name of the one who will come. Amen.
So glad you could join us for worship today. It's been a time to reflect on the beginnings of the season of Advent as we prepare for the coming of the Christ child in our lives, the Christmas season. But there's a season before that. We call it Advent. It reminds us to prepare, to prepare for that coming. In this case, it's company. And it's company that takes up residence in our lives through Jesus the Christ. I want to invite you to join us for our uh, Zoom fellowship time. That uh, link as well as the password is on our website at www.nsumc.com. would invite you to join us. But go forth now to love God, to love God's children, to make every day a day of grace as we go forth to experience the living God in our lives as we're called to be one with each other, one in community, and one before the world in all ways. May God's peace be with you, and may your week be full of surprises, of joy, of hope, and of that grace that allows for that experience of the expectation of God in our lives. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.